We don't just look at older video games on this channel, we also look at how you can play them in the modern era, and a way to do that is through emulation. That's anything from disc-based games to even those original cartridges, and today I'm going to go through the ultimate guide to a Super Nintendo emulator. Firstly, to get this emulator, you're going to need to go to snes9x.com. On the homepage, it'll tell you a little bit about the program itself, but what we need to do is go to the download section. When you click through, there'll be a couple of links that you can choose from. Choose whichever one you want, but I'm going to choose the one from Emulator Zone. Then just click the link that relates to your system, whether that's Windows 64-bit or 32-bit. Once downloaded, go to your Downloads folder and extract the file. Once that's done, you can delete the zipped up folder, as you don't need it anymore. At this point, just click through to your extracted folder, and then you can click on the SNES 9X application. You think at this point that you can start running games, and while you can, what we're going to do is set up the emulator so it's a bit more customised to your preferences. Go up to Input at the top, and then Input Configuration. Alternatively, just press Alt and F7 on your keyboard. This will bring up the same menu. Joypad 1 will be Controller 1, so tick the box that says Enabled to enable the controller. Then click on the box next to the up function and press whatever you want assigned to up. Ideally the up arrow on the controller. The box will then turn green when you press your controller and once it's mapped it will automatically move down to the next function. You can see my controller on your screen showing you some examples of how I'm mapping, especially when it comes to up left, up right, down right and down left. This would be two button presses in two different directions, but by adding these, it will give you eight points of movement instead of four. Of course, when you're done, you can go back to controller and select other joypads if you've got more people playing. You can then close this window and go back up to inputs and select customize hotkeys. Alternatively, press Alt and F9. You can set up all of your hotkeys in a similar way to how you've mapped your controller. Click in the box for the function that you want to map and then once it turns green, press any button on your PC keyboard, or if you've got anything unassigned on your controller, you can use that as well. These hotkeys also show you quick save and quick load for various slots within the emulator, and again, these can be remapped if you want to. When you're happy with the key bindings, you can then close the window. Back in the main emulator, go up to video at the top, and you can press full screen to make the emulator full screen. Alternatively, you can press Alt and Enter. But maybe you want to play on a different scale, in windowed mode. You can do this by coming down to window size and selecting anything from 1 times to 10 times the original size. My preference is around times 5 or times 6, but it may be different depending on your screen size or setup. There are some further display settings that you can alter too. Go to Video and then Display Configuration. Alternatively, you can press Alt and F5 to bring up this menu. Here you can change the output method from Direct3D to any of the options in the drop-down box, but the two most common are Direct3D and Vulkan. This is also where you can set the emulator up to open up automatically in full screen by ticking the full screen box. Or you can have it full screen on ROM open, which means if you open up a game, it will open straight to full screen, and when a game isn't being played, it will be in this smaller window. You can change the aspect ratio too, from 8x7 to 4x3 by using the drop down. There's also scaling, filtering, and VSync options if you want to use these simply by ticking the boxes. Want to experience something similar to CRT TVs at the time? Then come over to Output Image Processing by clicking on this first drop down. You'll then be able to select scan lines, CRT TV style, or even extra filtering and scaling if you want to. The next drop down is High Res. Again, this is just some more filtering and scaling options for slightly better resolutions. Image processing is completely optional and won't affect gameplay. It's just as more graphical enhancements. Before we get going and actually playing games, there's just one more thing that you need to do. Go to the top menu and click Emulation. Then come down to Settings. Alternatively, press Alt and F8. You don't need to change much here, but I would tick the box that says Pause when inactive. That way, if you tab out of the emulator, your game will automatically pause. I would also untick Add SNES 9X to Registry. 
The reason for this is because if it is ticked, it will add files to your registry. You might be fine with this, but if you remove the emulator from your PC for whatever reason, it will still appear with this open with when you go to open certain files. Then you'll need to go into the registry to remove them as an option. To remove those registry entries, open up the start menu or press the Windows key, then type in run. When the run program opens, you want to search for reg edit and then press OK. This will load up your registry. Then click through to H key underscore classes root. Find the applications folder and then SNES 9X dash X64 EXE and delete this folder. This might be different if you're using a 32-bit version, but the folder will be in the same place. Also, you'll need to go to H key underscore current underscore user, then find the software folder and then the SNES 9X folder within that. And once you've found it, remove that folder as well. But only remove either of these registry keys if you've already deleted the emulator off your system. At this point, you're all ready to play a game. So find a game that you want to play. It may come in a zipped folder, but you don't necessarily need to extract it. All you need is the SFC file. Then you can right click, open with SNES 9X if there's a registry entry, or if there's not, and you've already got the emulator loaded up, you can drag and drop the file into it. And that's it. That's everything you need to know to get yourself started with emulating games for the Super Nintendo. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments below and feel free to subscribe for more content within the ultimate guide to Super Nintendo emulation.